Okay, let's talk about the state of the game for Diablo more though, for the people on the main channel here that are curious how it's going. They've been following the latest news. I have been working very heavily on my DM Diablo Immortal though channel, the second channel here. I've invested a lot of time and effort into building the channel up for the launch of the game. When the launch of the game came out, it was probably, in my opinion, the worst received mobile game launch I've ever seen in my time. Um, as a mobile gamer, which is interesting because in every single one of the reviews, which people kind of trash on the game, and some of it's fairly correct, to be honest, um, they all admit that it's a fairly good game, which I actually will admit as well in this video. Uh, the game is a solid backbone. I think the best comparison I can use for this game, and I've used it multiple times, is it's like the Halo TV show if they took off the helmet, but the rest of the show was good. Like, essentially, uh, the audience is mad because they did the one thing they didn't want, added monetization in Diablo game. It's all about grinding and then limit grinding at the same time in order to make monetization push forward. Um, but the rest of the game is actually a pretty good game, which is, I think, what's got people doubly even upset. So what I want to do today is uh, not so much get into the monetization again, because I feel like I've not only covered that topic on a few videos now, but that topic is basically being beat to death like a dead horse at this point by many YouTubers even larger than me. Instead, what I want to do is talk about the state of the game for the players and how the players will feel about the game in terms of gameplay mechanics, bugs, um, and yeah, even power level as well. So we'll talk about pay to win only in that aspect. So let's get going. First and foremost, um, mobile experience is borderline flawless. I would say the more the, uh, the mobile experience is, is really, really good. It's really clean. It's really polished. I see little to no bugs while I'm playing on mobile. The PC client, on the other hand, when you're playing on the PC client like this one here, it is fairly buggy. I do see uh, crashes that happen. There's problems purchasing stuff. If you do actually want to purchase stuff through the store and uh, there's issues actually getting your buttons to work as well as with some channeling skills uh, and with controllers, etc. So there is some issues actually related to the PC client itself. Um, now the PC clients in beta, so they do sort of have a built-in mulligan and gimme with that with that uh, sort of excuse there, which I actually believe in this circumstance because considering the PC clients in beta, the mobile was not in beta, and the mobile being flawless, it is what it is. If I choose to play on the beta, then so be it. I'll get some of these bugs at the moment. I know they're acutely aware because I've been told they're acutely aware of the bugs and they're actively fixing them. I do believe Blizzard wants this game to have legs. I don't see this as a quick cash grab. I'm not going to deny it's a cash grab. I think basically if you make a mobile game in 2022, you are definitely basically building a cash grab. I still think the game's a 9 out of 10 in terms of actual gameplay and what you actually do when you're in the game. I very f firmly feel this way. I mean, I, I, I've played this game um, probably over 100 hours at this point, and the gameplay loop is enjoyable. I've played a lot of mobile games as far as what you can expect on a mobile platform. This is uh, just about as good as many of the other games that I have played, if not significantly, significantly better. And I mean, the other games I've played, there are on the same level. I'm thinking like Genshin Impact, for instance. And there's even uh, other games that don't have pay to win in it, like Apex Legends, etc., that are pretty good mobile games as well. And I would argue Diablo in terms of actual gameplay and how the game itself is up there on those type of levels in terms of actual enjoyment. Now, let's talk about uh, where the balance is on the game and how that affects the players. Currently, combat rating is very difficult to acquire, both as free to play and as pay to play. Without having your Paragon level beyond 20, I believe the combat rating caps about 1170, and you need around 1200 plus um, if you want to be able to do some of the next tier content after you hit 60. So you do hit what would be considered a paywall pretty quickly. Now, this is where the soft caps for grinders um, and hard caps for grinders start getting into the conversation. Basically, they've added systems into the game that make it where if you grind significantly, your experience goes down and down until effectively you don't get any experience at all. This means you can only get up to a certain amount of levels higher than what the essentially the average level is on the server. This is to keep people gated from, from not being so far forward that when you see them in PvP and everything, they just one-shot the whole team. It's literally impossible and they actually are immortal, ironically. Um, 
So I have two feelings about this. I absolutely love the boost aspect where the people that are behind can play less hours to catch up. I think casuals or people that start the later in games should have ways to stay relevant in these types of games. I mean, you're never gonna catch me arguing against that. I do think it's highly discouraging for the literal best players in the world to play the game and attempt to play the game at a grinding level when the game physically shuts you down and tells you you're going too fast, please slow down. What that basically tells me is that a game like this one uh, is wanting you to experience what the game wants you to experience and not making you make an experience out of the game that you want it to be. I find this very counter to MMO logic. Typically in MMOs, it's about making the experience what you want it to be instead of the reverse. So I think we're seeing some counter, um, we're seeing some complaints basically because of that type of feature. People are wanting to play it at their own pace. I can understand this. This is mostly the blacksmith and gear requirements for higher paragon levels, meaning it can be a, probably a month to the average person is gonna be able to equip the next set of gear, which just seems like a really long time for people trying to actually progress the game, or it's gonna be multiple weeks for people actively grinding the game like 10 hours a day, which again seems pretty long to just get to the next hell tier, especially when we consider there's like five hell tiers. Okay, so that's also getting to some people as well. So you're seeing some complaints from like more of the freemium uh, high-end grinders and you're seeing some complaints from the people that aren't playing the game because they don't want monetization within the game. And then you're also gonna be seeing some complaints from people like me who are more of the mid-tier spenders. I spend a few hundred dollars a month on games. I've spent 500 on this because launch I typically spend more and I stopped spending the 500. My feedback to the devs was this, after the first $200, the money you spend does not feel good. If I'm spending money to literally have fun as somebody who likes dopamine, the dopamine is not there. There's not a reason for me to actually purchase anything as when I purchase it, not only does it not feel good so I don't get the rush and excitement or whatever it is that you want to hook people like me into the game, but on top of it, um, the items them themselves are so RNG based that even to get an upgrade, I could be put in the unfortunate circumstance where I could get something that I actually wanted, but I literally can't do anything with it. At my last $200 spent in this game, factually got me no upgrades. There was nothing I could do with my last $200 spent. Granted, I gambled that $200 and it is a gamble. So you could say, well, never lucky. And sure, I would agree with the argument, but I would also argue you, you should, you should get something to the point that that the $200 should at least feel like I gained something. I don't even think I went up one combat rating in $200. Okay, so what does that mean for the actual state of the game when it comes down to it? Uh, it's this simple. I'm coming to the same inescapable conclusion as all of these other reviews, that are even the ones that are hardcore trashy on the game. Uh, there's issues with the game. We all will openly admit they need to be addressed. Paragon level caps, uh, the pay the win needs to be dialed down a little bit and retuned. Um, there, there's a few things that need to be addressed, okay? But the actual game itself is really good, which is why it's sad. Because the gameplay itself is, is fun. There's a variety of events. The MMO aspect is great. I love the clan system. Like, there's a lot you can do in this game. And there's a lot to do with the game to push it into the future. Like, they have good core infrastructure and backbones with the game. Just need to address some of the concerns the public have and then we really got something with that being said love you all thanks for watching this video